Around 4,000 years BC, at the start of the Neolithic period, the first inhabitants of the Iberian Peninsula slowly began to transform the ecosystem with the introduction of agriculture and cattle rearing. Today, 6,000 years later, the forest which once covered the entire peninsula has been reduced to just a small series of small islands dotted across the Spanish landscape. In 1979, the Spanish government, worried by the disappearance of this important natural habitat, declared one of these islands a national park. The choice was not random. Covering an area of almost 18,000 hectares and containing two-thirds of all protected species in the Iberian Peninsula, the Monfragüe National Park is today one of the world's last remaining paradises of the Mediterranean fauna and flora a unique enclave where man seems to have achieved the difficult balance between exploitation and conservation of nature. Both inside the park and in the area surrounding it, there are meadows with oak and cork trees, the result of the constant influence of humans on the landscape. The forests have been cleared and bushes removed in favor of the pasture necessary for the development of intensive cattle rearing. Along the steepest slopes, plant life has remained unchanged and shrubs cover the forest floor. There is very little variety of fruits on the meadows, but there is one which is very abundant and very nutritious, the acorn. The seed, produced by the oaks and the cork trees and greatly appreciated by the wild boar and domesticated pigs, is also the favorite food of one of the most common birds in Monfragüe, the wood pigeon. The abundance of cork and oak trees means that every year there are plenty of acorns for all the animals of the park. However, coming down to the ground to gather them can be a very dangerous business. While the wood pigeons are busy filling their stomachs, a stealthy enemy lurks nearby, watching. A wild cat has heard them and has approached. This feline prefers to hunt at night but the presence of so many pigeons together is a temptation he can't resist. Hunting during the day is much more difficult. The birds are wide awake and visibility is much better, which means the wood pigeon can spot the danger and fly off. The wildcat represents one of the final links in the food chain, the system which decides who eats who in nature. At the bottom, holding up the entire structure, are the rodents and the insects. Just above them come the reptiles, like this oscillated lizard, the largest lizard in the Iberian Peninsula. The lizard, in turn, is often eaten by the wildcats. All the links in the food chain are dependent on each of the others, and any change in one link will affect all the rest. The wildcat's future seems uncertain. The reduction in the numbers of rabbits, one of its main food sources, combined with the gradual loss of habitat, means that numbers are down to worrying levels. And there is another problem. 
Crossbreeding with the domestic cat. More and more domestic cats can be found up in the mountains and they breed with the wild cats. This is almost impossible to control and pure wild cats like this one are increasingly rare.